Welcome to this presentation of the basics of telemedicine, part of the Preventing Prescription Opioid Misuse, Addressing Pain Management via Telemedicine Program from the PA Foundation. This curriculum focuses on providing a foundation for PA students and other pre-prescribers to navigate pain management in a world that relies increasingly on telemedicine. The training offered through this program will highlight the subtleties of working with pain patients through telemedicine, with an emphasis on mental health and preventing the abuse and misuse of prescription opioids. What is telemedicine? In much of the healthcare industry, the terms telehealth and telemedicine are used interchangeably. Technically, telemedicine is a subset of telehealth. Telehealth covers all health services provided using telecommunications technology and telemedicine refers specifically to clinical services under that umbrella. The American Academy of Family Physicians, AAFP, defines telemedicine as the practice of medicine using technology to deliver care at a distance over a telecommunications infrastructure and between a patient at an originating site and a physician or other practitioner licensed to practice medicine at a distant site. At the end of the day, telemedicine is just another platform for providing health care to patients. It generally encompasses real-time synchronous care through video or phone and asynchronous visits which do not happen in real time. These are often e-consults, communication over email, and the sharing and forwarding of patient medical data with other clinicians. Telemedicine can also involve remote patient monitoring, where a provider can track a patient's health data from a remote location. This is usually done through medical devices used by the patient at home, such as vital sign monitors. So how do these types of visits compare to in-person visits? In most ways, a telemedicine visit will be very similar to an in-person visit. In general, you will follow the same standards as in-person medical services, use the same standard of care, practice by the same code of ethics, comply with security guidelines of HIPAA, provide proper documentation to the patient's primary care provider, and follow your licensing and credentialing guidelines. Remember, your medical knowledge base is the same. You can still take a history and do a modified physical exam, and you can still work through an appropriate differential and provide the same level of care. Telemedicine is medicine. The only real difference is the platform. But there are some important differences in how you interact with the patient. You are obviously not there in person. You can't physically touch the patient to do an exam, and you may have limitations due to lack of tools, depending on the patient's location. You also need to know where the patient is located in case you need to call for a higher level of care or help. Telemedicine may also be difficult for those who are uncomfortable with the technology or those who may not have access to the required tools. Patients who have been hit hardest by the COVID pandemic may also have the most difficulty accessing or financing virtual care. It can also be challenging to build a relationship with a new patient this way, especially when you are working with patients who are in pain and or having issues with substance abuse. These are sensitive topics and these patients are often discriminated against and feel uncomfortable seeking help. You will have to pay extra attention to the relationship building component of your visit in these scenarios. Will you yourself be practicing telemedicine? More than likely, yes, at least some version of it. Regardless of specialty, as technology advances and patients have access to more tools, you most likely will be practicing telemedicine in some way, shape, or form. A surgical PA might use telemed to do post-op checks with patients. An OBGYN PA may use telemed as a solution to provide birth control counseling. And an endocrinology PA may do a live video chat with a patient to discuss recent lab results and answer questions on how to better manage their diabetes. Of course, telemedicine has its limitations. We may have to ask the patient to come in for an in-person exam if needed, or we may have to seek higher level care in emergency situations. You may also be wondering about the tools and resources available to telehealth providers. The way your telemedicine visits will be structured depends a lot on your specialty and practice setting. You could be working out of your own house, a standard clinic, or a hospital setting. You may be seeing patients who are in their homes, in hospitals, or somewhere entirely different. Some patients will have access to remote monitoring devices, like a mobile EEG device, 
while others may have nothing. And as for consultations with other providers, most practices will have a process in place for obtaining e-consults. If you're part of a large healthcare or hospital system, this is likely already part of their EHR. If not, you may be independently networking with specialists or contracting the use of a dedicated referral vendor. Many consults can be completed quickly over the phone or email and can help you decide whether or not an in-person referral is needed. What about more complicated situations like chronic pain? How can you manage a patient's pain virtually? Many aspects of pain management can still be handled via telemedicine, but you may also encounter patients who need more intensive or specialized care. You will likely learn during your initial exam and conversation with the patient if they need to be referred elsewhere or if they need immediate assistance from an emergency department. For medication management, things can get a little more complicated. Prior to COVID-19, opioid pain medication could only be prescribed via in-person visits. The DEA eliminated the in-person evaluation requirement during the pandemic, but it is unclear if the new controlled substances guidelines will remain. Regardless, you will need to ask yourself if you are comfortable prescribing such medications without seeing the patient. Are they able to come in for consultation? Will this be short-term or potentially long-term? Telemedicine can be a vital tool in the fight against prescription opioid misuse. By learning how to best provide care through all available mediums, you are helping to expand access to vulnerable populations and reduce the stigma associated with pain and pain management.